On this episode of Smoke Signals, we take a sneak peek at what's coming up in pre-release trial 3 of Smoke 2013, and we walk you through look creation using a color warper in order to speed up your grading workflow. Hi everyone, I'm Marc-Andre Ferguson, product evangelist for Smoke, and welcome to Smoke Signals, coming to you live from the terrace at Autodesk m and &E headquarters right here in beautiful Montreal. It's a hot summer month, and that means another build of Smoke pre-release trial is just about to hit the servers, and I'm going to give you a sneak peek at some of the hot new features that are planned for PR3. We'll also discuss look creation. Now, most of you have probably downloaded Smoke pre-release trial 1 or 2, and have tried your hand at color grading using our color warper or color correction tool. So we welcome back Mark Hamaker, Senior Product Marketing Manager, who will discuss exactly how you can create looks with the Color Warper, save them, and share them with your friends. Thanks, Mark andre So what I wanted to do is just take a few minutes and show you guys one of my favorite features of the Color Warper that you might have missed and I'll also give you a couple of tips of how to do some slightly more sophisticated color correction than the base tools inside the Color Warper. So I've got a timeline and it's got some shots on it and what I want to do is create a stylized look but I don't just want to create one look I want to give my client two or three options to pick from and I'm gonna start with this shot of the airplane here. Well, what I'll do is I'll start by adding an effect and I'll pick the color corrector of course and I want to go right into the Color Warper but instead of using these basic controls, I'm going to go right into the editor. You know, the first thing people do when they come to the Color Warper, and it's an easy mistake to make, is they just grab this Warper ball and they start twisting it around and they get these kind of ugly, bizarre results. Now, there's a lot of subtlety in this tool, and I'll show you how you can take advantage of some of that that may not be obvious when you first step into the app. What I want to look at first is this pop-up here that lets you get to the gamma curves. So now you have the ability to adjust the gamma across R, G, and B. You have a luminance curve. You can really start doing some subtle color correction. And if I look at this, when I think about creating a look, what I might want to do is tweak in you know, a little bit more red in the midtones. So I like that. That warms up the shot. When I go to green, I, I realize that there's really not a lot of contrast in this uh, forest background. So let's start pulling the, the lower end of that green down. And I can work quickly back and forth because now I've got a little too much red or maybe I you know, move that red in a little deeper. Um, I like the idea of this being a bit of a warmer shot. So maybe I'll, I'll tweak a little bit of blue in to see if we can get some, some yellow taking it out. Let's add a point and I can you know, pull or adjust that blue in certain areas. Uh, I can even go down and, and say you know, I want to maintain a little bit of blue in that sky there and those highlights. There's lots of options that you have here. You can even do things like grabbing the entire gamma curve by holding control and then kind of adjusting and moving through. So I kind of like the look of this shot. I think this is an interesting look. But remember I said I wanted to create a couple of different options to show my client. So what I can do is use the sub setups menu to store that look. And I'll just hold that down. It like saves a basically just a snapshot of what I'm working on. You know, warm red. Okay, that's that look. I want to go back to basics and check this out. If I reset everything, it resets the entire look, but in sub setups, that warm red look is still there. So I can keep these looks. These will stay consistent throughout the application until I restart. I'll have these 10 looks, any instance of the color warper that I use anywhere in Smoke, whether it's on connect effects, uh, whether it's in the timeline. So let's go ahead and create that second look. And this time, I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm going to kind of go in the opposite direction and take some of that red out. I'm going to go to green. Maybe we'll go ahead and add that contrast. But this time, I want to create a sort of cool blue look to the whole thing. So that'll be our second option, something like that. And then I'll just use the luminance curve to really you know, knock that contrast back in. So I kind of like where we're going with this look as well. And if I go to sub setups, I can simply save it here by holding that down and go to cool blue as another look. So now I can quickly toggle between these and show these looks to my client. So let me show you another way to create a look that I think is really interesting and I'll build off of this cool blue look that we have going on here. And what I want to do is use one of the selectives. 
Now, traditionally you think of a selective color correction as isolating one color and changing it. But smoke actually lets you do things like define based on range or tone. So I want to grab all of the highlights in this image. And it's a little hard to see exactly what smoke is selected until I view the matte. Now it's important to remember when using the selective color corrector and viewing the matte that it's the black areas where the color correction will be applied based on this matte. So what I'll do is I'll take my tolerance and my range here and I'll start making adjustments. So I'll run it up about like that. And I also want to add just a little bit of blur into that. So let's be very subtle to start with. We'll just set that to maybe 5. And when I come back to my result, as I start running that white level up, you can see that we're only affecting those highlight areas. But watch what happens if I change this to something like 15. I start to get a really nice kind of halo around all of the brightest parts of the image. And I can do the same thing with the shadows. So let's take another selective. I'll pick the shadows. Look at the matte. And this time we use this top set of curves here. We really want to just get absolutely the darkest parts of the image to be showing there. We know we want to do a similar blur, so let's go 15 and 15 for those. And now when I come back to my result, I can start pulling the black levels down. And you see I'm adding that kind of interesting, kind of really murky blackness down in the background. And I'll go back into sub setups, and I'll just hold this down. So it's taken that preset in that register, and I'll call this cool blue, high, and low, since we did that effect on all of the high and low channels. And then I can quickly toggle through and see what those different looks are going to give me. Now to give you an example of how to use these, I've actually put something up on area. You go to area.autodesk.com slash smoke, you'll come to this product feature page, but go to community downloads and you'll find some color warper presets that I've created uh, to go along with this example. And you basically install them by stepping into any of your color warper effects, make sure you're in that subsets menu, hit load, and just navigate to where those are. And now you'll see what I can do is just quickly step through these 10 presets and just try them all out on my scene. So a very quick example, hopefully that uh, gives you a bit of inspiration to go out and create your own looks on the color warper. And if you do, post them to area. We'd love to see what you're doing with them. Now I'll throw it back to Mark andre With Smoke 2013 pre-release trial three releasing shortly, we wanted to give you a preview of what we're working on for Conform, one of the most anticipated features in the new Smoke 2013. So in the next segment, I'll give you a sneak peek at the new Conform tab workflow we intend to introduce in an upcoming version of Smoke. Remember, this is just a sneak peek at a tool that's very much a work in progress. However, it will give you an idea of the functionality we intend to implement for Smoke. And as always, remember that in the Smoke pre-release software, things are changing fast. What you're about to see is the direction we're considering and not the final software. I'm gonna give you a preview of what we're working on uh, on the conform side of things in Smoke. I'm going to go to the new conform tab. I wanna show you two scenarios. First of all, using absolute paths and then having Smoke search for your media. So for example, let's say I load a new XML like this. So on my desktop, I've got a, um, a Final Cut Pro 10 XML that I cut in this system. So basically all the media is at the same place and uh, this should be pretty straightforward. If I double click on this, you see that it's a Final Cut Pro 10 XML, it's a 720p file at 20 q I've got sequence import options that I could change, for example, link to the media or, or um, change the sequence name. I could change the resolution of the sequence. I don't wanna do any of this. So I'm just going to import this sequence. It's going to look for the sources. So it found all the media and you can notice here down on the timeline, I've got my clips and it actually also imported each of these sources individually in a folder. So if I uncheck in the options menu, hide link, you will notice what happened. It deconstructed the timeline, look at every single source, both video and audio, uh, looked at the different resolutions that it was looking for, and basically found the media, hence the little linked status right next to each one. The other scenario that I want to show you is if a project was not edited on a system on which Smoke is installed. For example, if I go back to my desktop, I've got this XML here that was edited in Final Cut Pro 7 and was handed to me by uh, an editor on a USB drive. And the media is all over that drive, so basically I will have Smoke look for it. 
So I can go ahead and in the uh, sequence import options, I'm not going to link to the media files because I actually want to search for the media and show you how that works. So I'm going to import this. It will deconstruct the timeline and basically show me all of the media that's available, that should be available. And I've got a mix of 30p and 2997 um, files, as you can see here, and an audio file on the top here. And notice in the timeline there's a new icon that says that a media is unlinked. So your segment is run in red and you've got this little red triangle here. So what I want to do is point smoke to where I know the media is. So I'm going to go into import like this. In a conform side, I'm actually not going to import the media. I'm just going to say, hey, look, it's somewhere in here. So I'm going to go into capture scratch and import the media from here. So it's going to go through everything in the Capture Scratch folder and look for possible matches to, uh, to this file. So imagine you could also rematch your offline files to an R3D file, for example. So it found matches, possible matches, for every single clip except the audio files. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on any of these and say Link Found Sources. All of these files over here have been relinked except the audio file. Now, the other thing that you can do is also say that you want to force match something. So let's say I go into here and say, I want to import this audio file here. And uh, for some reason, it's not matching this file. But let's say you did, because uh, I changed the file name. So let's say you want to force link uh, these, these uh, guys together with what I selected. All right, so I can say force link to the audio file over here, the same thing for the right channel, and there you go. And you can see that it's uh, rematched everything, and uh, I've got the audio and, and all of that. So basically, this is what we're working on on the conform side of things, and uh, we hope to be able to release this in the very, very near future. Be part of the community. Ask your questions on the area forum for Smoke 2013. Autodesk tech support specialists are there to help you. Find out about upcoming events in your area, post comments on Smoke, and hang out with your peers on our Autodesk Smoke Facebook page. And while you're at it, promote the work that you've produced with Smoke 2013, and you might get showcased on a future episode of Smoke Signals. I'm Marc-Andre Ferguson. Thank you for watching.